come and see 21 plus the Berlaga year-end exhibition at Ski Block, part of Test Site Rotterdam, the fifth international architecture biennale in Rotterdam. This year we tried to do something a little bit different. The studios actually ended about four to five weeks earlier than normal, so they ended at the end of May. So for a period of four to five weeks um, after the students' final reviews, they actually were able to dedicate time to, um, to develop the products for this exhibition. So um, you know how it is that everybody's always working until the last minute uh, uh, for their final presentation. So I mean, there was that first moment of energy for the end of May to kind of that final charrette. And then there was a bit of a pause that allowed the students to um, really go back and refine their ideas, refine their work. And I think that that has made this exhibition particularly um, strong because there's been, there was a, a moment for reflection and to think about the proper way to um, translate an idea. Um, that often remains in two dimensions on the computer screen or in a PowerPoint presentation or in a text and to figure out a way to properly inscribe that in space uh, uh, within the exhibition display. I'm definitely personally not an advocate of um, overproduction or over presentation, right, or over editing, let's say, but I think that this provided a certain space for critical reflection. So to push the projects to the absolute uh, final end, and then to be able to have the opportunity to step back, to uh, engage with the students, to learn how to self-edit their ideas, to um, refine the arguments that they were trying to make, um, not only the intellectual arguments, but also to refine the quality of drawings and models and uh, other forms of architectural medium, uh, media that uh, communicate an argument. The research is dedicated towards the understanding of this new mode of capitalism, which we call integral capitalism, where computation plays an important role, a key role in all the major steps of reduction system of today. But computation is something which is shaping our environment today and not humans. So let's say for instance in the financial industry, in this capitalist model of today, the financial industry has engaged a lot of uh, robot, robots and algorithmic trading to generate immense amount of wealth which then is reinvested in built environment like building cities, bridges, etc. to acquire some sort of real value to this sort of money. So we are looking at what actually is pushing this built environment of today, what is building this environment of today, where is the money coming from, what is generated. We see that computation itself uh, com uh, comprises of a technical aspect, which is the hardware, but also the softwares and the mathematical instructions and network along with it. So this studio is basically uh, looking, focusing at these algorithms, because in order to learn it, in order to understand the phenomenon, we have to experience it ourselves. So we look and we achieve it through Mathematica, which is like a technical uh, computing tool, through, through which we try to see the built environment of today and the forces which has actually shaped this sort of built environment. So we can say that uh, the way the world is getting transformed today is so radical that we couldn't have perceived this a few years back. And it is going through a social, economical, geographical secession. And we, as an architect, to participate in, the, so in this sort of succession, we have to understand what is the core, what we have to pay attention to the main thing which has caused this sort of uh, succession, this transformation. And this core itself comprises of computation. My name is Su Wu, I come from China, Hubei. By taking economic crisis as the background, we question ourselves what act should position in this situation. I strongly believe that economic source of power is natural resources. The core of the economic is not about the data, it's about meaningful information. This kind of information is from the raw material in the globe. We try to program our architectural design by programming the 
programming language to understand this kind of math and physics. And the project introduced several algorithms by produce the initial geometry. The archipelago structure is extract from the developing leaf venation algorithm. This kind of uh, sustainable system include four function, main functional islands. The whole work is inspired from the Frank Lloyd Wise broad care city and Buckminster Fuller's the massive floating cities. My name is Chen Xun Wu. I'm an architect from Taiwan. My research is about the spatial arrangement between the human and computer. Through the historical approach, the research shows the computer shift from the domestic machine to a global machine and with the high capacity of the intelligence. So before the computer serve as an assistant of human, but now it's more like human serve in, as an assistant of a computer, like in some master advanced use of the computer in the space, the data center, robotic assembly, like robotic sorting warehouse, the computer deploy its logic into the space instead of the traditional architecture. So at the same time, I use Mathematica to reproduce the computer logic, which is the computation circuit, and also study the pattern of it, its different behavior by applying for the different set of rules, and for the developing to the physical form. As a final output, it generates a gigantic data center. It's like one chip, say, in the computer. And it composes uh, the architectural element, like the partition, wall, door, and also the structure, and even the, the whole landscape. So the pro by this approach, the project tried to put forward the speculative working environment in the future. Uh, like in some advanced use of the computer in space, like data center, robotic assembly line, robotic sorting warehouse, actually the computer deploys logic into the space instead of the traditional architecture. And what I try to find out is when the computer deploys logic into the architecture and what's the physical form it will take from the, the code itself. It's not just uh, the code, it's a physical form. My name is Chuan Hu. I'm from Taiwan. My research is about looking for a new type of urban landscape to adapt the nomadic life in computational age. Uh, I use uh, a distributed system, which is communication network uh, in the internet to transfer it to physical space. It makes space more democratic, so the world will become my basic element. Mm -hmm. And the, every uh, supported uh, function will go into this world. So you can change shape every time but you have to based on this wall. The wall will become the basic system for the city or basic infrastructure for the city. So you can say the wall will limit the space or the control the quality of space because everything you have to plug in this wall. Every program you have to plug in and based on this wall. I also showed some possibility for, for this system show the maybe the space occupied by some office or some houses because the program could be changed every time. So I just show some possibility for this system. My name is Kyung Su Chang and I'm an architect from Korea. My project is called Houses, Computing Individuality. It is sort of small software which generate architecture by your participation. In fact, the project was inspired by the work of John Haydock, the Texas houses, and I think he shows certain possibility to have infinite variation in architectural design. So my project is composed of the various steps. So when you execute it, it asks you to create certain geometry based on the pixels. Then the algorithm starts to evaluate each pixels and sort it according to its function, for instance, common space and private space, then the algorithm 
apply all the architectural element, which I called alphabet, into the result. Then user can see immediately the generated spaces, and also he can change the configuration. For instance, he can select certain type of wall, its arrangement, and even he can move the location of the furniture. So in this way, the software can help user to understand what the generated space is and plan their own life. So the software has a capacity to have infinite variation and is operated by the user. So I think the software provides not only the practical solution, but also certain sense of the attachment, uniqueness, and the individuality. This work of the John Hader is, as I told you, is the infinite variation. And I mean, the fundamentally, is totally, I think, different between his work and my work. Hey, my name is Hee Jung Kil, and I'm from Seoul, Korea. My project is titled Life in Computational Landscape. I started to think of our way of living today that becomes more and more physical and mental nomadism. Since our working, working environment has fragmented that we can work and live anywhere and anytime. So I propose a system of landscape which allows us to be more free and nomadic. So the system is built by a computational topology which speaks about places and networks. So by using this, the system is considered how the area is located and how it is connected to the other neighborhoods locally and globally, as well as physically and non-physically. So once the system is established, it can adapt to any kind of condition or topo topography to analyze and create a landscape. So I try to achieve a system to create uh, our fundamental environment of life called a computational landscape instead of any particular master plan such as the Broadacre City by Frank Lloyd Wright, which aims to confront uh, future challenges. Hi, uh, my name is Nashma Chaudhary. I'm an architect from Chandigarh, India. This project is precisely about this condition, this phenomenon, where we are deeply immersed in this network quagmire, which comprises of different signals, such as Wi-Fi, 3G, Bluetooth, which have imprinted a new landscape, an immaterial landscape, over our current city fabric. Well, this project deals with the analysis of, this, of the dynamics of this sort of immaterial terrain, and it translates it into a physical structure, a structure which mediates between the immaterial and material landscape. Thinking from, taking from the past, we've seen Kishu Kurokawa coming up with these capsules where he, in which he provides solitude from the environment outside. Well, uh, we have taken in this project the space-filling algorithm which defines two key essential nodes of electromagnetic physics, the emitter and the receiver. The emitter, as points, creates the st core structure of this new typology and establishes volumes in space with different with varying but specific intensity degree of exposure to this core structure. So in the future, we can posit different structures, different programs based on the intensity of connectivity we require. For instance, a park in the future would not be just sitting in the public, or just sitting outside in the garden with trees and bird chirping, but it would be basically about disconnecting from the world outside. And this, on the same hand, parallelly, we would be needing high intensity field for supporting data centers and servers and that sort of stuff. I'm Miyuki from Japan. The computational age, it becomes the decentralized the structure of the human settlement and development. So this project inspired by the Japanese architecture, the traditional things. The, they control the condition by closing and opening and the layers the paper wall. They have like a, only two or three, they have a layered. And in the winter season, if they close, they have the air inside. So that from the inside, they can keep the temperature from the outside. Also, the position of the wall, it becomes partition, insulation, and ventilation also. 
So this project focused on the space by climate condition and the availability of the natural resources from the global scale to local scale. The climate condition, the data, the uh, visualized to understand the new geography of the climate. And in the local scale the, about the project, the climate condition makes this arrangement. The space uh, the response to the climate condition. So I found that interesting is that so many different uh, climate scale, the condition makes the many kind of human activity. My name is Ji Li. I'm an architect from China. In this project, I'm trying to create a pure space created by a program logic with a structure of a mathematical topology instead of an architectural typology. I got this idea because of today, as the rising of the immaterial production, the architecture is actually getting liberated from the functionalism to turn it into a kind of very pure space instead. So, uh, on the other hand, the individuals also, they are getting more and more independent. So, the only thing they still rely on is the internet and all the interfaces that provide the information. And inspired by this idea, I set up a very ideologically discrete system. And in this system, that each single unit acts only according to a local environment. I let it grow, I unfold each of the boxes, and I let one line go through all of these points all of these boxes to connect everything together as a one continuous interface. And by applying the same uh, uh, self-similarity data structure into different scales, I can actually potentially let this interface expand endlessly. So ultimately, the system will appear as a status like a cloud. There's no clear shape, no boundary, no limit, no inside and outside but it's super diverse and it keeps the same special quality everywhere. I, I managed to find, uh, to set up, up a bottom-up system to, to uh, go back to the very origin, that is, let's say, to maximize the individuality from the very local, simple rules. And the entire system actually is beyond my expectation. It becomes very complex, dynamic, and uh, fascinating. And that is the, the coolest thing I found in this year. That is my project. Uh, I am Ryo Aida, come from Japan. My research is histograms of architecture in the computational age. Originally, histogram is visualize the quantity of the data and the distribution of the data in the field of statistics. I use a histogram in architectural practice and uh, explore the representation of the space which has been accompanied with new living and working environment in the knowledge-based economy. Recreation and uh, interaction between knowledge workers are fundamental aspects of the immaterial production and the economy itself. So I deal with the mathematical abstraction such as combinatrix in order to simulate the degree of interaction between knowledge workers in a very abstract way. As a result, the space for new economy could be represented through the special, uh, special configurations and uh, archetype which only interaction between knowledge workers are embedded for the knowledge production. Revising the histogram of the architecture by Super Studio in the 60s, within different economic framework, we could imagine the space for a new economy in a very radical way. Falling over house from Frankfurt, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the most amazing experience. That was worth, I mean, it was worth going to New York and then going to Pennsylvania and see, see the building. I mean, it was worth it.